It's a day many of you remember, Windstorm 2015. Thousands of people were without power. Four years later, some utility companies are looking for solutions to make sure your power stays on during storms. We saw plenty of rain this morning across the inland northwest. Things are drying out, but for how long? Plus, a warning for parents-to-be, an offer that seems too good to be true, well, is. We've got the Better Business Bureau weighing in on this new scam. Let's get right to breaking news now at 11. At least 10 people have been shot at a backyard gathering in Fresno, California. Right now, police are saying at least four people are dead. Police say the shooters snuck into the home's backyard and opened fire on a group who had been watching a football game. California authorities are looking for the suspects at this hour. You can see this is new video just into the Creme 2 newsroom, again in Fresno, California, where authorities are saying multiple people are dead, at least four people. They say a 10 people in total were shot at a backyard gathering. We're going to be following this developing story uh, throughout the night. And the minute new information comes in, we'll update you on creme.com and inside the creme 2 app. Our morning team will have the latest on up with creme beginning at 5 a.m. Well, someone made uh, some serious damage at the state capitol today. Washington State Patrol is looking for the man responsible for vandalizing multiple buildings on the capitol's campus. It happened sometime overnight. The man damaged at least three buildings. They're, they are reviewing surveillance footage to try and identify him. Looking ahead now, here are three stories happening this week. First, closing statements begin tomorrow morning in the Kelsey Barrett murder trial in Colorado. Her fiance, Patrick Frazee, is accused of murdering her. Barrett grew up in eastern Washington. An expert witness testified a tooth found near a burned area of Frazee's property is human. However, the witness says there is not enough DNA to, to determine who it belonged to. Frazee pleaded not guilty. If convicted, he faces life in prison. In. Then on Tuesday, the FAA meets to discuss a crash involving a Boeing 737-700. The head of the FAA says there's pressure to return the plane to service, but adds his agency will not do so until the MAX is safe to fly. Southwest Airlines made 1380 made an emergency landing in April of 2018 after an engine failure. And it will be a very busy week ahead in Washington, D.C. The public impeachment and hearings of President Trump start again on Tuesday. Congressional lawmakers will hear from eight witnesses this week in the impeachment inquiry of President Trump. Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman will be the first to testify. He heard the president's July 25th phone call with Ukraine's president. This morning, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi called on President Trump to submit his testimony. The president could come right before the committee and talk, speak all the truth that he wants if he you wants, don't to, expect him if to, he wants to take the oath of office, or he could do it in writing. He has every opportunity uh, to present his case. But it's really a sad thing. I mean, what the president did was so much worse than even what Richard Nixon did. But at some point, Richard Nixon cared about the country enough to recognize that this could not continue. All right, Michelle's tracking more rain in the forecast. She's here now to help you prepare for the week. Michelle. And we already saw some uh, a good deal of rain this morning, about four tenths at the Spokane Airport, but nearly double that just across the border in Idaho, Coeur d'Alene in the surrounding area. Satellite and radar, though, showing pretty quiet conditions out there right now. We're dry, but we are seeing some fog develop in the Spokane area and around Deer Park. Taking a look at some of the visibilities at Felt's Field, visibility down to one mile right now, but socked into some heftier fog out in Deer Park with some freezing fog being reported quarter mile visibility. Spokane Airport doing pretty good right now. 10 mile visibility. Uh, Moses Lake is down uh, again for tomorrow morning. We're looking for either fog or some low clouds, but you are going to be waking up to kind of a gray day. But temperatures on the mild side still in the 40s in Spokane, still 47 in Coeur d'Alene. Our average high is only 41, so very mild this evening. Upper 30s in Moses Lake and Wenatchee, where they still have mostly clear skies out there. 40s in Pullman and down towards Lewiston. The next 12 hours showing either fog or low clouds through the over overnight and early morning hours. I don't think it's quite going to be as warm as 48 degrees by 11 o'clock in the morning, but we will still see above average temperatures tomorrow. Rain moving in mid to late afternoon, a high of 47. Highs in the mid 40s on Tuesday with more rain and finally some sunshine on Wednesday with highs in the mid 40s. 
Michelle, thank you. Well, if you were here in 2015, you of course remember these images. Today marks four years since hurricane force winds hit Spokane and caused mass destruction throughout the inland northwest. Much of that damage came in the form of downed power lines and Krem 2's Brandon Jones explains how that forced electric companies to change their approach. Well, it's been four years since windstorm 2015 and the aftermath of that left power lines like the one I'm standing underneath down all across the city. That raises this question. Could placing them underground prevent the next power outage? That devastating windstorm left thousands of people without power and sent power companies scrambling to restore electricity. Down lines aren't just a problem in Spokane. This summer in places like California, the potential of power lines falling down and sparking a fire are so much of a problem, they have to cut them off during certain seasons of the year. This causes rolling blackouts and people are left without power for days. So placing the lines underground sounds like a great solution, but it's not all that simple. For Spokane, most new developments bury their lines underground, but that doesn't solve the problem for older ones that have been standing for years. To move them below the soil, some serious funding will have to come forward. Just take Kootenai Electric Company, for example. The windstorm hit just as hard, but fortunately for them, they received a rare grant from FEMA. To bury 50 miles of power lines cost a whopping $10 million, and the grant is covering three quarters of that. Hopefully there's going to be fewer outages, and we know our members are really going to appreciate that as well. According to their website, Spokane's major utility company, Avista, that doesn't have any projects in the works to relocate old lines. They do have safety guidelines for those working with electric projects, and that's another thing holding underground lines back. They reduce the risk of fires and power outages, but can cause problems if you're not aware of them. That's why another windstorm could bring many of the same issues we saw in 2015. In Spokane, Brandon Jones, Crim 2 News. All right, on to sports. Gonzaga women's basketball was on the road to face the third-ranked team in the country, Stanford, tonight. The Zags came up just short, and Karthik Venkatraman joins us in studio to tell us about the close finish. Karthik. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people expected the Zags to hang with Stanford through four quarters. Well, they did it through five quarters before losing 76-70 to in overtime. Gonzaga used a strong defensive effort, hustle, and free throws to stay right with the highly ranked Cardinals in the fourth quarter, 47 seconds to go. Jill Townsend hits a big three to tie it up at 60, but the, all they needed was one defensive stop up 62-60, but Kiana Williams for Stanford scores a bucket to tie it up. Gonzaga with one last chance, six seconds to go. Not a good possession. Jen Worth just hoists one up on a contested shot. We're going to overtime. In OT, a big development with GU down one. Jill Townsend fouls out. She was the go-to player down the stretch for the Zags. She finished with 18 points. The offense struggled a little bit after that. A couple of moments later, former Central Valley star Lexi Hull gets the bucket to put Stanford up 67-64. And then moments later, Hull got a steal and coast for another score, 69-64 Stanford. And then Hull one more time with the dagger on Gonzaga with one more bucket. She finished with 20 points, eight of them coming in overtime to down the team from her hometown. Lexi's sister Lacey also plays for uh, Stanford. She had three points tonight for GU. Melody Kenton had a great game off the bench. 12 points, 10 rebounds on five of nine shooting. The Zags will now try and rebound when they host Eastern Washington next on November 22nd. Tim. All right, Karthik, thanks so much. Well, still ahead tonight, a couple received a handwritten letter with uh, several gift cards in various for various maternity stores. Sounds like a good deal, right? But is it? We'll tell you why the Better Business Bureau is warning people not to open or use the cards next.